guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I know I have been gone quite a while again and I'm very sorry for that. Um, I might end up filming a whole video on why I have been gone and what has been going on. If I feel like it. <laughs> I'll have to see. I don't know if it's that interesting to make a whole video on it. So anyways, what I would like to talk about today is the latest video that Taylor Nicole Dean has uploaded. The video is about her new pet orchid mantis and how to take care of an orchid mantis and I've noticed quite some couple of things that were not correct like some information that she put in that aren't quite true. Personally I have been keeping orchid mantis for almost one and a half year at this point and I have quite a bit of experience in how to keep and breed them and what their needs are and everything. So just for the people out here that would really actually like to keep an orchid mantis, I want to clarify a bit about how what the needs of the mantis are. Because I know Taylor Nicole Dean has a very, very big influence on the animal society on YouTube. And I want to clarify the information that she didn't put correctly. I just do want to clarify first that this is not a hate video towards Taylor. I really like Taylor. I watch her videos all the time and I've been watching her for a really long time also so this is not a hate I just think everyone can make mistakes and just because she's such a big influence she can make mistakes too but I feel the need to clarify her mistakes so that people who actually want an orchid mantis don't make the mistakes I mean I also make mistakes I'm not saying that I'm perfect but I like it when people point out my mistakes so that I can correct them and give my pets a better life, you know? So let's watch the parts where I think Taylor is not informing you guys correctly together and then let me explain what the actual proper care in that situation would be. In my opinion, anyways. Orchid mantis are a little more sensitive, they're a little more fragile, they require more care and humidity and temperature watching. They're definitely overall more skilled. Yeah, fair enough, that's true. Yeah, so orchid mantis I really wouldn't recommend to any new people in the mantis keeping field. They are very quite sensitive and when I had my first orchid mantis I was struggling really hard to make sure the care is 100% what they need. It's teeny tiny, it's really little. You can see the condensation on the bottom because I do keep this extremely humid. Now yeah, I mean, yeah, condensation is fine, but if the condensation doesn't fade within at least, at most, an hour, it is too humid. And too humid is also not good for your mantis. Trust me, they will pass from it. I believe the correct word in English is waterlogging or waterlogged or something like that. Please bear with me, I'm not a native speaker so sometimes I'm missing some words. Okay, before I forget to mention, I currently do not own any orchid mantis since my adult female has recently passed because she was getting very old. Um, so I can just put some old footage in and that's all I have. Orchid mantis come in three colors, pink, purple, and white. Most commonly they are white though. Okay, so she claims pink, purple, and white. Now I know orchid mantis come in white, pink, and yellowish tones, but I've never heard of purple orchid mantis. I am very sure that that just does not exist. Um, I have some pictures of my mantis ranging from a very, very hot pink, like very pink, intense, to yellow, to white. And I'm gonna insert some pictures so you guys can see. But there's nothing like a purple orchid mantis, and if you've ever seen one, um, feel free to let me know. Males only go through five molts in their life, while females go through seven. Um, males do go through about six molts, while females can go up to nine. Mostly though, it's eight molds. To tell the difference of your mantis, it's probably easier after the first molt because their abdomen will be bigger, easier to see. But even from a young age, you can sex them. Basically, you look at their abdomen and you count their abdominal segments. Females have six abdominal segments, while males have five. Mm, actually, I know she put it there that she accidentally set it backwards, but I first didn't see it when I watched the video for the first time, so I was getting really confused. 
um, and it's actually also wrong as females have five to six abdominal segments depending on from when you start counting and males have seven to eight so anything below seven is a female unless you're really bad at counting I don't know and there's actually another way to tell the genders as uh, after about their fourth mold they will develop a ring around their neck um, for the males that ring is brownish, yellowish in tone and females it's green, like very bright, juicy grass green. Also you can tell as the petals on their legs for females are much bigger than the males. You can actually see it on Taylor's video also. Um, I pull up the picture right now. You can see that for the female the like petals are very broad and wide and for the male they're very slim. And also you can see the body shape. The body shape of the female is much more flat and broad. And for the male, they're very round and slim. So all of this is indicators for the genders. Two weeks after their very last mold, females are ready to mate. When no, definitely no. That is absolutely not true. Females take about six weeks to mature after their last shed, um, depending on how, how warm you keep them, of course. But the absolute indicator that they are mature, sexually mature, is when they start pushing their abdomen downwards, away from their wings and pumping with it. That just means they're pushing out pheromones to attract males and that is the absolute giveaway. But usually that does not occur before five to six weeks after the maturity mold. Now glass enclosures for orchid mantids are so much better than the mesh enclosures that some other people use for other species of mantids. This is because orchid mantids love humidity and when it comes to mesh setups, the air can escape way too easy and then it can't retain the moisture and it just becomes a very dry environment. I recommend putting a heat mat on one side of the enclosure and this way they can decide what range of temperatures they want to go to. If they're a little too warm, they'll go over to the cool side. If they want a little more warmth, they'll go over to the warm side. Okay, so I, there's too much happening right now that I want to commentate on. The heat mat is not really the best thing to use for an insect no matter what. Because an insect instinctively goes down when they're hot and goes up when they're cold. It's just their instinct because that's how it would be in the wild. So for mantids, it's always the best to use a heat lamp. A mat is just not really doing the... It's not really, it's not the best result with a mat and the mantis will maybe not like the temperature and I'm not a big fan of heat mats, I just don't think they're very good for insects. Also about the mesh enclosure, I do agree with her. But I will get back to that in a second when she shows her enclosure. Nymphs actually do better in the little lower side of the humidity, while adults do best around 80%. For nymphs, you can just spray down their cages as little as once a week. With the help of the heat mat and a closed off lid, it really should keep the water in there just fine. For okay, so I do agree about the humidity part. That is okay. But I don't agree with the part where she says to, it's enough to spray them once a week and you should keep the tank closed off. I don't agree at all whatsoever because the nymphs still drink a lot of water. For me, from my experience, when I spray the nymphs every second day, what I do, uh, they always drink. Every single time I spray them, they will drink from the water drops. As two adults don't really drink from the droplets anymore, I don't know, maybe it has to do with the growth or whatever, but it is not enough to spray nymph once a week. Um, I mean, it's not only about humidity, the animal also needs to consume water, obviously. And also, close-off tanks are... <sighs> close-off tanks with mantis are literally the worst thing you can do. But, as I said, I will get back to that when she shows her tank. For a basic glass enclosure, I put tin foil over the lid so they can't get out, but they can still perch upside down on the top. A lot of Okay, so as you can tell, she has a glass tank that is just full on glass like a fish tank and then a lid where there's literally no circulation either because she put tin foil on it. All praying mantis require like very, very high um, airflow, air circulation, like fresh air constantly coming in and that you just won't have that when the tank is completely closed off, the air will become stagnant 
completely stagnant and that will kill your mantis. If you don't have any circulation of air, no, that does not work with praying mantis. Most recommended for orchid mantis, I would say, is having a proper tank, a glass tank, having a air hole thing in the bottom and one in the top. Large ones, not just like, like this big. I will show an example in a second, um, because that way the air can go in and out, so it, it's constantly flowing through the tank and not just sitting in there, not moving whatsoever, because that is very harmful for praying mantis. For praying mantis, airflow is the most important thing. Now all mantids are cannibalistic, so do not put them together. The only time you should put two mantids together is when the female is ready to breed and the male is ready to breed. You now all mantids are cannibalistic. I do free, but there is quite a few species of mantis you can house in groups that are very... The cannibalism in those species is very, very, very minimal and as long as you keep enough food supplied to them all at all times, usually nothing should happen. Species you can keep in group, for example, are Philocrania paradoxa, the ghost mantis, Sibylla pretiosa, Mm, honey or lofi, the moss mantis. There's gongulos, gongulotus. Um, and there's a couple more. There is definitely species where group housing is no problem whatsoever, so long as you keep enough food supplied at all times. They will only go completely cannibalistic if there's no food and they're starving. So I definitely recommend glass enclosures or the little deli cup with the mesh lid on the top, but just make sure you know a good way to keep up with the humidity or your orchid mantis will not live long. Okay, so Taylor keeps talking about how important the humidity is and I do agree, but the orchid mantis does a lot better with less humidity but better airflow then a lot of humidity and no airflow. That will kill it faster or more likely than a little less humidity and more airflow. For any praying mantis, airflow is the number one thing you have to think about. But as mentioned before, this is definitely not a hate video towards Taylor. I really like her and I think she does an awesome job with her videos, but I just think in situations like this where I see her talk about a lot of things that I just don't think are true about a certain animal I have a lot of experience with, I want to correct her a little bit. Just so you guys don't have the wrong information about an animal you might want to get at some point. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope I will see you here again soon.